Hello everyone. Welcome to the 11th podcast of SIPS Meena Procurement Master Talk series. I am your host Lalit Dhamija with 40 years experience in procurement and supply. I am ex procedure and process assurance manager uh, in procurement department of Adnoc Onshore. After my corporate career spanning 37 years, I am global procurement and supply chain trainer and coach. I have been working as SIPS volunteer in UAE since 2009. Today, I am honored to be joined by a millennial, and she is Miss Molin Atieno. Hi, Molin. How are you doing? Hello, Mr. Lalit. Good. Welcome. So Thank we will you. talk about her journey in completing MSIPS, her co-founding of Prospakinia, current procurement issues. Uh, Uh, millennials like uh, Molen are facing, and message for those who aspire to join the procurement profession. We will summarize the key learnings at end of the podcast. Now, SIPS Mina Procurement Master Talk series covers in-depth interview with procurement and supply chain management professionals from various diverse industries. these stories about highs and lows in the lives of procurement uh, professionals provide thought provoking insights to face the market challenges and of course we are getting diverse viewpoints from all the age groups from millennials to baby boomers and soon gen z will be joining us so i, I already said we welcome again our guest for tonight Sips Mina Procurement Master Talk uh, Show, Miss uh, Josephine Molen Atieno. Uh, she holds Bachelor of Science degree in Business Administration from Moy University, Kenya. Uh, Molen has eight years experience in supply chain management and is currently a procurement manager in. Uh, one of the oil and gas service companies in kenya molen holds the prestigious msip designation and serves passionately as a membership officer of sips kenya branch and uh, she is a board member of supply systems and people a consulting house that is committed to transforming business through enhancing transparency and accountability while promoting ethical practices in supply chain molen is also co-founder of uh, prospa kenya uh, a network of uh, champions of professionalism in procurement and mentorship of young procurement and supply chain professionals molen is an enthusiast of the profession and believes there is more value addition that procurement procurement uh, profession can add uh, to an organization and also to entire economy she believes building professionals today who will ride the wave of changes tomorrow and build a better society welcome to the procurement uh, master show molen thank you so much mr lalit for hosting me in your 11th podcast uh welcome it's a great and uh, to interact with you yeah thank you same here and uh, our audience is like to know the millennials view point you are the first millennials in this uh, sips mina master procurement talk series and our audience will be eager to learn and to understand your view point from the youngsters view point and how your journey has been so far so we are looking forward uh, to your storytelling and uh, to start with molen tell us about your yes. journey of completing msips i know so many students out there would be wanting to know this well it started back in around 20, 2016 uh-huh. when i enrolled for my msips course 
-hmm. All thanks to the SIPS Foundation for the scholarship. All right. I was the first lady to get the scholarship in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And I can proudly say that it has helped me a lot to reach out to people. Mm -hmm. Even more than 20 students from Prospect get this, got the same scholarship under okay. my pupilage. Okay. So for me, it's like a big achievement and I'm so proud of it. It is. Yes. So it started back in 2016 where I visited in Dubai, where we got, we interacted with you for around 20 minutes. Yes, uh, and it yeah, was I like, remember uh, during the annual conference of CIPS in uh, Dubai in 2016. Yes. Yeah, I met African and delegation it, and young uh, mm -hmm. Mola and Atenu was one of them. Yeah. It was like a turnaround for me, for yeah. the professionalism, uh -huh. where I got my motivation through the conference and interaction, networking with the high top. Mm -hmm. People who are so experienced in supply chain, right. people like you, Lalit, Lux, we have Sarah Omer, yeah. and and also the this this one, Mr. Hari Haran yeah. Lakshmi Narayan. Yes, this he Mr. Is the, Hari. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, he's our is our main mentor at Prosper Kenya. Yes. So basically, I interacted with a lot of people who really helped me. Uh -huh. to to do more in this profession. Right. I also managed to and attend most of the cons conference around the globe, uh -huh. places like Nigeria, where I got a privilege to attend one of their conference, which it was very good. Mm -hmm. I also interacted with people who were so passionate about the profession, people like Harrison, Sam, uh -huh. Stella. Yeah. Yes. And um, also one of, I was also one of the speakers at South Africa. It's a very big conference, a supply chain conference. Uh -huh. In South Africa, I was one of the delegate main speakers and I was talking about the professionalism. All right. So there is this thing in me that drives me more on this professionalism. I'm so passionate about supply chain professionalism to a point that I spread the news all over the world. Mm -hmm. I also managed to participate in one of most of the events, the House of Procurement in Kenya, yeah. which is so known yeah. by House Bernard Yeah, House yes. of Procurement Bernard. Yeah, okay. Yeah, tell yes, us about by Bernard it. Yes. 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 yes, it's a, it's a very interactive station mm -hmm. and his programs are just out of this world. It's a very interactive station and we are hopeful that one day we'll have a major conference with them in Dubai. Mm -hmm. Good. Yes. So basically I completed my course in 2018, where afterward I got my chartered status to be a member of Chartered Institute of Supply Chain. So you completed your MSEPs, uh, you started in 2016 and completed in 2018. Correct. That is inspirational. And you did through examination route? Yes, I went through examination route. Okay, I think you were one of the deserving candidates who got the scholarships from Sales Foundation. And within two years, you completed the uh, complete examination route uh, for getting uh, MSIPS mm -hmm. uh, inducted into a membership of Chartered Institute of Procurement and Supply. And uh, right. good, you are mentioned, I know you for four years since that conference in Dubai. And uh, uh -huh. I, uh, you really know how to network. Uh, that is why you have been to Nigeria, you have been to South Africa, and you are in constant touch with me mm -hmm. and my other colleagues. So that was yeah. one of the reasons we got this opportunity to have you for this uh, uh, SIPS uh, Mina Master Procurement Talks. All right. I appreciate. All yes. right. So, uh, Molin. Uh, which uh -huh. three words your colleagues will use to describe you? <laughs> That's a, a tricky question. <laughs> well, <laughs> Molin is seen as a knowledge leader. All right. An enthusiast mm -hmm. and passionate in what she does. Yes. And she's always willing to assist when, it need, when the needs arise. Yeah. 
and also as self-motivated and a go-getter. Uh, I really so, love, yes, yeah. Yes. So Absolutely. my colleagues, uh -huh. my colleagues normally say that I'm very optimistic, uh -huh. and and I see setbacks as opportunities to learn and grow. Yes. So there is always a creative solution to a problem, and I love searching for it. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, I know uh, some of our friends were going from here for conferences in Kenya, uh, to House of Procurement and for SIPs. And I know how you helped uh, the professionals um, uh, facilitated uh, uh, their uh, trip there and interacted mm -hmm. and coordinated this uh, with the SIFS branch as well as House of Procurement. Uh, so yes, you are helpful, you are enthusiastic and we see your activities and posts in uh, LinkedIn also. And uh, right. the very fact you travel abroad and uh, speak in the procurement conferences, that is inspirational. Mm -hmm. uh, okay. Merlin, you are also a co-founder of uh, Prospa Kenya. Tell us about it. Yes, Prospa Kenya is like my little baby. <laughs> uh -huh. okay. So Pros well, we started as Prospa. Like Prospa, we believe in continuously learning mm -hmm. and growing mm -hmm. and also enlightening mature professionally yeah so at some phase we normally give back to enabling and empowering others mm -hmm. and i'm privileged to be one of the founders of a network of professional called prosper kenya okay so you hold so your looking activities at, uh, regularly right some of the other activities are going on Yes, we normally do it monthly. We normally go across the all universities in Kenya. Okay, let us know so, more about it. Yeah. Uh -huh. So looking at where we started as a professional exchanging views, we started with like four people. That was around late 2014. Mm -hmm. So we started like exchanging views about the profession. Yeah. And as we look back today, it's a very important important and a big achievement as mm. Prospect. Uh -huh. We've been able to keep live, rich discussions, also giving opportunities to young people to talk right. and present in audience, like uh -huh. PowerPoint presentations. Mm -hmm. We are able also to share and learn and take the network to grow by gathering procurement students from all universities in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And we also have representatives of each universities in Kenya. So to present us, since Kenya is very broad, we have different counties, so we have representatives on the same. Mm -hmm. Well, I'm associated with this group by coming up together to motivate the youth yeah. and learn to be educated. So we normally help them to understand the meaning of and importance of procurement in organization and also in the society. Mm -hmm. So since I'm um, um, that highly passionate about the profession and persistent to drive myself to be the best in what I do and to love what I do, yeah. in a way to position myself in future and able to share the knowledge with the youngsters, the millennials. Yeah. So like I normally involve in coaching them mentoring the, those students and the mm -hmm. young professional yeah. in all areas, especially in this field of procurement and supply chain. Yeah. So it basically is, through, uh -huh. through PROSPAC, through the PROSPAC, which is the Procurement Student and Professional Association of Kenya, uh -huh. we were able to get a prestigious award okay. in South Africa, that was 2016. We were awarded by CAPS South Africa as one of the emerging overall winners in the category Best People of Development Initiative. Congratulations. In procurement challenge. Thank yeah. you so much. Uh -huh. So that's when we were able to be known all over Africa. And I think also in Dubai, we were well known. Wonderful. Because yes. the very fact from 2014, now it is 2020, uh, you mm -hmm. have sustained and you have uh, grown to uh, newer heights, that itself mm -hmm. uh, proves that uh, uh, PROSPA is uh, doing well 
under your leadership and your other friends. Yeah. Uh, Malin, uh, what are your uh, SIFS branch activities in Kenya and abroad? Okay, since I'm, I'm one of the volunteer of SIPs, SIPs in general, mm -hmm. and especially in SIPs Kenya, I'm the membership officer. Okay. I'm the branch membership officer, and also I normally do the social media part. Okay. So I normally handle issues concerning the SIPs membership, how the students are facing when it comes to membership and the process on how to register to be a mm. member mm -hmm. and also taking them through the journey from SIPs to the MSIPs. Good. So we normally advocate them to follow the journey. Mm -hmm. We also emphasize them on the ethical test, which most of them, they did not know more about it. All right. And also the CPD hours, which actually 50% of the SIPs members did not know on how to go about the CPD hours. Yes. So I've played part on that and a lot of people have benefited out of it. I also help in updating the events on social media so that they should be able to know what is happening right. and keep them on track on what we are doing as SIPs Kenya branch. Mm -hmm. Yes. So uh, you are MSIPS from 2018 and you are engaged in so many activities and I feel you have got potential to become a fellow of Chartered Institute of Procurement and Supply. Keep your activities on <laughs> and uh -huh. keep in mind and uh, work towards it. All right. Uh -huh. yes. And uh, Merlin, uh, how has mm -hmm. your journey been uh, so far in procurement and supply chain? Uh, in your profession, in your business, where you have been working uh -huh. uh, these years? Okay, well, I've been in healthcare uh -huh. initially. I've been in healthcare for the past six years. Okay. Then another two years I've been in oil and gas. All right. So, like, procurement is all the same. It's all yes. about the processes that we follow. It doesn't matter which field you are in. Mm hmm so well, procurement and supply chain function has basically developed considerably over the last several years. Yeah. And it, and it continues to change daily. So we should be up to date. Yes. And as a procurement and supply chain professional, we should be ready to embrace the change so that mm -hmm. we are not left behind. Mm -hmm. So we are now in an age where a majority of organizations have identified procurement and supply chain as a key business unit, yes. which initially it was not. Mm -hmm. So in the success of the strategic business plan, it's, I'm so passionate in a way that I drive myself to the best in what I do so long as it's of the benefit of the profession that I'm involved with. Mm -hmm. And I really love what I do. Yeah. So I normally see a challenge like an opportunity that I need to embrace. Mm -hmm. So as a young professional, I normally, I'm normally flexible in all areas of the supply chain since it's a 360 and it's quite big. Mm -hmm. So whenever, when it comes to something to do with supply chain, I'm normally up to the task. Right. Yes. So okay. I normally, okay, through this journey, it makes my journey in a prof, of a profession more interesting. Mm -hmm. And there is this feeling of a accomplishment, right. satisfaction, then when you share your impact for your fellow procurement professional, and this is why I normally emphasize on nurturing and mentoring the inexperienced to make them better more than mm -hmm. they are. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so it's more of you give back. Don't, don't stick with your knowledge with you. Give yeah. back to those who really need it so that they can also see, they can also have that passion of what yes. they are doing. Uh -huh. Yes. Very good intentions and uh, very good mindset about thinking. And uh, it is not only about mentoring people who are unexperienced or youngsters. Now, this is a time of reverse mentoring also. You would have heard reverse mentoring. So yes. myself, uh, being in the profession from over two de four decades, I can uh, say uh, comfortably that on a daily basis, I'm learning. 
from youngsters like you, millennials, okay. uh, Gen Z. So okay. it is both way, uh, mentorship yes, learning and is reverse still, mentoring. Yeah, learning is a continuous process. Absolutely. Yes. And uh, Molen, what uh -huh. changes did you observe while working during uh, these uh, pandemic times, uh, coronavirus? Uh, in procurement, okay. what changes did you observe? Coronavirus, COVID-19 has now become our new normal. Mm -hmm. So it's more we need to embrace it and learn to live by it. Yes. So like global supply chain currently, because we, through this COVID-19, we'll focus more on the global supply chain. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we are going through a massive shock. We are really going through a, ma a massive shock. Yeah. which is unusual and strike both ends, like the, su the supply and demand. Mm -hmm. So the bo both the buyers or the suppliers are facing this challenge in keeping goods and services to flow at right. this time of the pandemic. Yes. So like the developing countries are carrying the direct consequences in supply chain breakdown, which is aggra aggravated by the trade restriction. Mm -hmm. And as the COVID-19 situation changes daily, it's crucial for all parts to have visibility of the supply chain, mm -hmm. also to share data and communicate effectively. Mm -hmm. So things like technology, which is accompanied by enabling policies, yeah. can play a significant role in rebuilding the trade mm -hmm. and supply chain system and also making the supply chain more of a shock proof in the decades to come. Okay. So su mm -hmm. yeah. the supply chain, the supply chains are now a global complex and it's extremely interrelated. Mm -hmm. So basically not just in terms of commodities, but also these simple supplies like the face masks, the PPEs. Yeah. Yeah, so things like, I normally go with this saying where Lux normally keep on emphasizing, like you should always think global and act local. Mm -hmm. So it's still important to center you in either plan B or C. So you're able, if plan A doesn't work, you have another contingency plan, either B or C. Yeah. So which is around the proximity. So we can see a good opportunity for local supplier development mm -hmm. where we can build a solid relationship with our suppliers. Right. And also some are moving up to the chain from tactical to strategic. Yes. And we are also, we are joined by the heap of, of after all, taking care of your people. You should take care of your own people within the mm -hmm. organization. Mm -hmm. Think, okay like the loyal teams will play a critical role in pulling your business out of the crisis mm -hmm. as it is a great opportunity for the supply chain team. Yes. And also it helps to demonstrate the value add, especially where now cash is the king. Yes. 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 And also we can see the, the issues of cost cutting. Cost cutting like improving on the cash flow to provide financial flexibility. Mm -hmm. We can look at things like lengthening payment terms to our with our suppliers that we can negotiate with our suppliers. Mm -hmm. Also, postponing the capital purchases, yeah, like engaging the suppliers to offer discounts on some stuff, mm -hmm. or even discounting the low running SKUs. Okay. So basically, this and with this organization, we should add a list of critical supplier contracts. Mm -hmm. whereby for the emergency plan and even put some more key respondents onto retainer contracts. All right. Okay, we can also see that um, most of our outsourcing contracts are being drafted in such a way, disruption alone cannot be sufficient as a mm -hmm. reason, yeah. and we can able not to deliver on a contract. And now it's a high time we revise our contract. Okay, that's my suggestion. Because our initial contract cannot be the same with our, the current contract that we mm -hmm. will mm -hmm. be using. So it's high time we revise our contract. So because of this pandemic we are facing right now, 
it's beyond our human reach. It's a force majeure. Yeah. So we can basically not control it. Right. And because of a lot of contracts are being terminated, both parties also should be conscious about rushing to invoke to the contractual rights, mm -hmm. which might even land to, they can even land them in litigation. Yes. So that's basically my take. Well, this is very good, quite comprehensive. We really covered a lot of ground and a mm -hmm. uh, lot of different aspects uh, relating to terms and conditions and uh, relating to supply relationship management and what should be the strategies of procurement. Uh, that was quite good coming from you. Uh, you are quite knowledgeable and I feel the SIPS uh, training and SIPS curriculum and certification really helps. Uh, it is very good to see youngsters yeah. having such a good, uh, uh, complete, uh, whole rounded uh, knowledge about the profession and about different aspects of procurement. And Molen, what do you feel will be the post-COVID-19 uh, scenario in your opinion? You have covered quite a lot. In addition, if there is anything mm -hmm. which you feel uh, post-COVID-19 situation will look like uh, in procurement? Okay. The world after COVID-19 is likely to return to a world that was. Mm -hmm. And the rise of digital yeah remote working yes. working from home yeah. and also learning uh -huh. things like telemedicine and delivery services yeah you can see also other some structural changes mm -hmm. that may also accelerate yes things like the regionalizing in supply chain so mm -hmm. supply chain will be like region will be in region mm -hmm. and we can also see a further explosion of cross-border data flows. Mm -hmm. And like remote work is likely to become more common. Let me know, uh, Molen, uh, are you working remotely right now? Mm -hmm. or what is the structure you are following now while you work in your office or for your office? Uh, is it remote uh -huh. working or uh, how is it? Mm -hmm. Okay, we do it. And for my, for me, I normally we normally rotate three yeah. works, three days. I'm in the office. Yeah. The rest of the days, I work from home. Okay, so hybrid. That's so we are we are. I, yeah, yeah. So we are adapting slowly by slowly. So ah, okay. in the that's why I'm emphasizing remote work is likely to become more common. Right. In the near future. Okay. So we had some evidence that working from home is at least as productive as working yes. in the office. Yes. And however, many companies are reluctant to embrace the remote work. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now that we have tried and it, there are some good results out of it, so remote work might be maybe here to stay. Okay. So companies with international supply chains are dealing with shortages mm -hmm. and bottlenecks. Yeah. And we are likely to see many of these companies reshow some of their production. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, these tend to be not to create many jobs because most of the production is likely to be automated. Yes. So okay. that will be like a main disadvantage in the supply chain. Mm -hmm. Yes. So oh, good prospects uh, or good uh, viewpoint, I should say, what you're saying. There might be mm -hmm. prospects for the local economy to grow, but then you mm -hmm. said because of automation, which you can't stop digitization and automation, people are getting for being mm -hmm. more efficient and more effective. So mm -hmm. that will have some different type of uh, job creation in those mm -hmm. fields, people who are good in digitization or e-procurement or e-procurement solutions. So they may mm -hmm. be employed more, like you yourself said, the structure mm -hmm. is changing. So the structure mm -hmm, of procurement supply chains and uh, job requirements are changing and uh, we have to accordingly change ourselves, people who want to uh, be employed, so they need to upskill themselves. Uh, yes. Molen, now mm -hmm. uh, to wrap up and this will be a last question. 
what will be your message to those who aspire to join procurement and supply chain discipline uh, well this being the procurement and supply chain mm -hmm. it is not about the rank that's my take it's not about the rank yes but the experience uh -huh. you gain in the supply chain right you can be either a supply chain officer you can be assistant or a clerk but look at the experience not your rank well said yeah yeah uh -huh. it is a profession whereby one gains a, com a comprehensive understanding so long as you are in this field of supply chain you mm -hmm. gain a comprehensive understanding of how business operates right so you are able to learn about the process within an organization Mm -hmm. And between them, where one is able to learn how to develop a more effective supply chain and also improve profitability. Mm -hmm. So basically being in this field, you're able to learn even how to handle the industry challenges and the trends. Mm -hmm. Then you may be able also to jungle customers who yeah. maybe want their product delivered fast with the yeah. task of calculating their organization's mm. books. Mm -hmm. So also this... In this field, it requires someone who, 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 who has a critical thinking, yes. which is a skill which is valuable anywhere. Mm -hmm. Not to mention the ability to be innovative, strategic, and also to be creative. Yeah. So not only does supply chain touches on manufacturing, transporting, and tracking, warehouse management, shipping and delivery. Mm -hmm. It has an even broader purview of the job aspects. Yeah. So any, anyone who really want to join this procurement on supply chain, I will really advise them to also involve themselves in any professional body like CAPS. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a backbone. It's like yeah. a book. It's, a, it's like a guideline. Yes. And it makes the procurement more interesting, mm -hmm. and you also get to enjoy what you're practicing right. when you are in, any pro, in, a, in a professional body. Yeah. So like I say, it's a backbone or a guide of what you do on a day-to-day -day activities. Yes. So uh, I'll really mm -hmm. advocate anyone who, who is aspiring to join procurement and supply chain to also consider to be in a professional body like a global body, CAPS. Yeah. Yes. 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 So that is what, uh, that is the advantage of CAPS, that it is not that you get a qualification and uh, uh, that is end of it. It is a starting of the journey. As you yourself said, the procurement is changing day by day. We need to upscale us on a daily basis. Even that is not enough. So many new concepts and evolving technologies are changing our lives. We are listening terms which we have not listened before. Blockchain, artificial intelligence, robotic uh, process automation, 3D printing, and all the digitization, automation, all these things are uh, changing our lives and changing the way the procurement looks. So if you are associated with a body like the Chartered Institute of Procurement and Supply, you get support on daily basis. And also it provides a platform for networking, for interaction, from learning from others and sharing your knowledge, contributing to the body of knowledge. Merlin, it was a wonderful uh, uh, this interaction with you. And uh, you covered so many grounds. You started with your journey as MSIPS, how you got MSIPS, how you achieved uh, and uh, got the scholarship from Saves Foundation, uh, how you contributed and helped uh, 20 other persons getting the scholarship and completing the course. And also you are mentoring people, uh, making them understand about the procurement profession, about Saves qualification. You are also networking. You are even going abroad and attending Saves annual conferences and other events not only attending you are participating you went to dubai you went to nigeria you went to uh, south africa and i know you got other plans also uh, you are act very active 
in procurement profession as far as SIPs activities of any are concerned and also interacting with other bodies like House of Procurement. Plus, you also created this organization, uh, ProSpark Kenya, which is uh, rising to new heights and serving the profession. Uh, you are really inspirational for all the youngsters and even for other procurement professionals like us. So keep up your good work. Uh, thank you very much for your time and joining us and contributing to this uh, body of knowledge. If you've got any last message, uh, please feel free uh, to do. Malen. All right. Thank you, Mr. Lalin, so much. It was a great pleasure hosting me in this podcast, 11th podcast, Master Procurement Talk. Yeah. Uh, send my regards to all six MIN officials. Sure. And those who have invo been involved with them directly and indirectly. Yeah. Yeah, and keep up with the good work. Sure. Many of us know you in the UAE. Uh, Sam, Hari Haran, Lakshmi Narayanan, uh, Sarah Omar. And you got your own uh, millennials community here. I know Sedan Tamija. So yes, yes, we've met the... with him in Kenya. Uh, in Kenya also. So yes. I know you got your own uh, circle in the millennials and you interact with the various age groups. So I yeah. wish you all the best and we like to see you uh, working uh, towards your fellowship for Chartered Institute of Equipment and Supply and keep up your good work. Thank you, Malin. Thank you, sir. Audience, thank you very much for tuning up. Are tuning in and encouraging and supporting the SIFS MENA Master Procurement Talks. You can uh, access to all the podcasts which have been published on uh, SIFS uh, MENA uh, Facebook page or through uh, YouTube channel uh, Lalit Dhamija. Uh, you can hear all these uh, podcasts uh, at these uh, particular platforms. And uh, see you soon with a new podcast. Thank you.